So, you want to make a burrito, but you don't have any beans, you don't have any cheese, and you don't have any sauce. That's going to be one dry burrito. Hey guys, I'm Beth, that's back. Hi, I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to, uh, taking a look at how to make this cool, like, uh, ring. Not even ring, but this cool, like, material that flows and... Yeah, you see what it looks like. Just what what that is, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing today. So it's pretty, it's really simple. It's just these nodes right here, as you can see. Um, you can put this on any object. I can literally put this on a um, on a cube, and then put the same material on it. It looks sweet. Um, but yeah, so it looks really, really cool. I really like it quite a lot. Um, but yeah, we'll leave the cube actually because the cube looks pretty sweet. I'm not gonna lie. We'll leave the cube for now. All right. Anyway, um, so the uh, the first thing that we're gonna, you're gonna see over here is when I when I show you this we have a couple things we have an emission hue saturation value color noise mapping and texture coordinate nodes let's unplug everything except for the emission Oop, and take a look at that so far obviously we have bloom on as well so right here in the main tab you have bloom checked on these are the values here um, basically 0 0.6 for the threshold 0 0.5 point five point four intensity all the way up uh, there we go but anyway so we can turn bloom off for now as well so i have the the emission shader which is shift a search emission there you go boom right there and i have that on 100 so i timed it by 100 and plugged it into the surface of the material output um then i went ahead and i got a color ramp a color ramp node and i made it so that um we have three colors here we have this 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 green color right here this brighter green color um which is uh Right there, that's the hex for that. And then we have this dark, dark, dark green color that you can barely even tell is green um, when you look at it over here. And then we have this black color. It's just black. <laughs> I didn't need to open the hex for that. You guys know what black is. Uh, but yeah, so then I changed this to, uh, to, to B-spline. So everything's a little like smoother. So as you can see, like that's B-spline. That's linear. It's just smoother. Oh, uh, there we go. So um, to add a new little one of these little tabs, hit this little plus button, and it'll add a new one. You can drag it around different sections. This little, this little button down here, change the color around. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's that. And then in between these, I wanted to go ahead and make it so that I could change the color whenever I wanted to, because we have two different green colors here. We have this dark green color, and then we have this bright green. I don't want to have to go through and change both of these every time I want to change the color. So what I did was I added a hue, saturation, and value, which is shift A. I didn't do that for the color ramp. The color ramp node, by the way, is shift A, search, color ramp. There we go. And then the hue, saturation, and value is search, hue, and obviously saturation value. Boom, right there. So I plug that in between the color ramp and the emission. Turn the factor down to 0.8. Uh, 0.83, <laughs> and then um, and then I was just able to go ahead and change the color remotely, so I so I didn't have to change both of those colors. So we, now we can change it from there, which is really really pretty cool stuff. So let's make this like pink or yellow, or we can do a nice blue color that looks pretty sweet. We'll leave it on blue for now. Um, I added a noise texture, which is I put the color into the color ramp, and which is just a shift A search noise up oh, noise noise texture right there boom um there we go um and then what we need, we need to do after that is go ahead and change some of these values so um we change the scale to two uh which is i believe the default was five i think i changed it to two because it was it needs to be a little bit bigger detail all the way up roughness on 0.5 distortion on 2.4 um, you can see what that, that does. It looks really pretty cool. But um, but yeah, so there was that. And then the roughness. You can you can do a couple of different values here. I might actually turn the roughness up. Maybe 0. 0.73. Yeah. Cool. Nice. So um, there. So that looks pretty sweet. If you want to open up the, a second window here, um, make sure you put your cursor up at the top. I didn't do this in the beginning of the video, so I'm doing it now because it's bothering me. So um, to get that the uh, the shader editor open, go ahead and put your cursor at the top left corner of the screen or the top right anywhere where your cursor turns that little fps crosshair looking thing there, there you go click uh click and drag into the uh into the the screen there split the window into two hit this little button change that to the shader editor and i that's a really weird place to do it right there in the, in the middle of the video i'm gonna be honest with you but listen i forgot to say in the beginning okay i'm human you know things happen all right um let's go ahead and add in the mapping and the texture coordinate node um right there in the uh, at the end here so hit shift a and search for a mapping there we go mapping boom and then shift a search texture i hate looking for the texture coordinate node texture because you, you guys have the whole thing texture coordinate boom now we hook up both of these by putting the mapping into the vector of the noise and then putting the uh, generated of the texture coordinate into the mapping now 
Okay. The cool thing about this material is that it moves. So you can see here in the rotation uh, of the mapping, we have two keyframes down here in the bottom of the timeline here. So we have one on zero and one on 1000. Um, so I hovered my cursor over top of the X value in rotation on the mapping node. Hit I to enter the keyframe there. Hit I. Hover your cursor over top of that and hit I on your keyboard. And then go to the last frame, which is 1000. And then I, I changed it to 50 and hit I again to enter the keyframes. Now when we play this, you can see that it moves from from zero to 50, which is really, really cool. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make it move from zero to 100 real quick. So let's go ahead and play this one more time. You can see that it's moving, it's looking really good. It's looking, it's looking sweet. Now I made it so that this is a very linear motion. So what, what that means is if I go ahead and change this viewport from the shader editor to the uh, graph editor, you can see this line is straight when uh, normally if I double tap A to make sure everything is selected, right click, change the interpolation mode right here. It would usually be on Bezier. So it would be like, you know, rounded. So the beginning and the end is slower than the middle, which is not what I want. I want it to be the same speed through the whole animation. I don't want it to s start up and slow down. You see how this is a little curve. That curve is making it ease in and ease out. I want to I want to double tap A to make sure everything's selected. Hit uh, right click to go to the interpolation mode and then change it to linear. So now you can see this line is much more straight. It'll be a straight from zero to 1000 instantly. Um, and it won't slow down. It won't speed up. It won't get faster. It won't slow down, which is really, really what we need. So let's change this back to the uh, shader editor. You can see this is the uh, all the nodes that we have here. So that's literally all that I did for this. Um, it's really cool. And then, of course, we turn bloom on and it looks like that, which is super sweet. So that is wondrous um i go ahead and get rid of this cube real quick and you see this what it looks like on the uh the nice little outline circle sphere thing which really quickly just in case you want to do that let's go ahead and actually oop, let's go ahead and oop that's not what i want to do um let's go ahead and hit shift a and search for a circle um before we before we move it all hit this little add circle thing down here and change the amount of vertices to 64 so it looks a bit better there we go then hit tab to go into edit mode and hit e on your keyboard to extrude all those vertices and then before clicking around don't do anything just hit s to scale it down in words like that it just hit s and scale it in like that and then there you go you can just make it about that big hit tab go back out of edit mode hit r x and a nine zero on your numpad to um to rotate that like this and then we can we have that nice little that nice little sphere that i made we'll put that in uh that uh material on there you can see there, and there you go you can see it looks pretty pretty sweet now for this one I did a couple extra things here. I am, um, I added some modifiers. You can see here. Um, I also have depth of field in the camera. I'll get into that in a second. But um, but the material is basically done. I just want to share this extra stuff because this is pretty sweet. Um, so what I did was essentially I um, added t uh, three modifiers here. So we have two. Well, yeah, we know we have. So we have two modifiers. We have two. So we have the these two wave textures. So the first one is add modifier wave right there. Boom. Um, and what I did here is I turned uh, the X motion off, so it's only the Y. Um, and then I have some values here, which is 55, uh, 0 0.31, 4.2, um, 0 0.82, that kind of stuff. And then down here in the time, boom, <laughs> open that up and I put the speed down. I think it was on 0.25 to begin with. I put it on uh, 0 0.02 because it's much slower that way. Um, there we go. And then the second wave, I have the exact opposite. So I changed it from only being the Y to only being the X. There we go. And the, the values is 0, 0.17, 1.5, 1 1.5. 1 and then the time is 0 0.005. Let's clean that up a little bit. 0, 0, 0.005. Let's just do 0 0.01. That's kind of active now, actually. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Maybe we should put it back on 0.001. There we go. All right. Yeah, 0 0.005 is the wave. There we go. Let's put 1051 so it tells us the number. There we go. Cool. Now, so once that's done, obviously we have those things all waving and looking uh, nice and good. So it's moving around like that. Now with the camera, hit zero. Let's go into the camera's view. I just rotated it until it was like down here. You see that guys can see it's like right here, kind of facing downwards. An easy way to move the camera around. Open this up right here and then hit uh, camera to viewport right there. That's what it says. Camera to view. Camera view right there. Hit zero. And then just click your middle mouse button. So click the scroll wheel and then just drag it around. You can get a nice little angle there, um, which is really pretty cool. So that's an easy way to do that. Uncheck that once you're done so you don't have to move it around on accident. Now, with the depth of field, super easy. Select the camera. Go to the camera tab here. 
check depth of field on, and then turn the f-stop all the way down to 0.1, and then change the focus distance until it's where you want it to be. So you can you can focus up there at the top, and you can focus down here closer to us, down at the bottom, which looks pretty sweet. Or uh, you can do it in the in the middle, which is kind of like where I did it right here, right there. There you go. So that is essentially um, all that I did for that. Just click, get rid of that. And but uh, but yeah, so that's our little that's our cool little wave material thing animation. I, I shared more than just some material today, but I felt uh, I felt like do doing that. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you watched the whole thing. And if you did, uh, you're a gangster. Uh, that's sweet. I appreciate you. I will see you in the next video. But until then, bye bye.